Hey you guys, it's Brit tonight. I'm here to jump on and talk to you about without a crystal ball landing herself into some more hot water, this time with Todd Chrisley. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so this is Katie Joy video number two for today, and I made a video earlier today kind of clarifying my stance on some of the really scary, you know, the, the select few really scary people that have inserted themselves into Katie Joy's life and crossed lines, in my opinion. Please go watch that video before you watch this one if you haven't seen it already, but today... Now, I want to talk about this um, possible incoming lawsuit. Todd Chrisley stated on a podcast he has gone ahead and served Kitty Joy Paulson with papers. He is not having it with her running her mouth on her channel. And, you know, I think that this is going to play out a lot different than the Tati and James Westbrook lawsuit. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Todd Chrisley because... If you guys are like me, I didn't really know a whole lot about him. I don't watch reality TV. I had heard of his name, but aside from being intertwined with reality TV, I didn't really know a whole lot about him. Michael Todd Chrisley, who goes by the name Todd, is a real estate tycoon who is considered by his family to be controlling, easily irritated, and often unreasonable. Todd is a germaphobe and tries to avoid things like dirt and animals. Todd was born in Georgia, raised in Westminster, South Carolina. He was previously married to his high school girlfriend, Teresa Terry, before marrying Julie in 1996. He has two children with Teresa and three children with Julie. He often responds to his family's antics with quips or snarky comments, many of which are repeated throughout the series, series referring to Chrisley Knows Best, his reality TV show. So that's who Todd Chrisley is, and he put out this podcast. It's called Chrisley Confessions, and episode 146, Tough Love, Numbing the Pain, from July 28th of this year. We're going to listen to a little clip and hear what he has to say. So let's let it play. I'm suing. It's not going to, it's going to be public record. I'm suing Katie Paulson with, you know, without a crystal ball. I mean, she has been the mouthpiece for. When he says family member, he's referring to his daughter, Lindsay. We'll get to that in a second. A family member uh, in the articles that were written and information sent. And I have the screenshots of a lot of these messages that Katie has engaged in. Um, and so I'm suing her. Katie, I'm suing you. You know that, right? So you going on there and deleting, you know, your Twitter and, and, you know, then putting it back up and then saying, I can delete evidence if I want to, as long as I keep it stored, you know, whatever you have now been served, which you have turned over to your attorney, that you are to preserve all evidence pertaining to every article that you have written about us. And I'm going to prove in every one of them how you have lied, stretched the truth, and just out and out with just reckless disregard for me and my family. So stop playing the victim on your 46,000 follower bullshit Instagram account. You are not press. You are not legitimate journalism. You are, a, you are someone who sits at home, who has no life, who tries to literally tear down anyone in this world who has done an ounce better than you. And that wouldn't take much. Yikes. So he is not here to play around with Katie Joy. So he obviously said in that clip that, you know, allegedly she was served as of July 28th. That's when this podcast was put out. And Katie also put out a tweet. Let me get to the tweet. So Katie put out a tweet the day after July 29th. And the tweet says, one thing I know to be true about Lindsay Chrisley, which is Todd's daughter, is that she doesn't need anyone to be her mouthpiece. She has two podcasts and a large following. If she needs to say something, she says it. She has never relied on me to speak for her. She's a strong woman that stands on her own. So that was on July 29th. Now, this really, to me, seems like the situation where Clark Swanson was feeding Katie Joy information 
with the Tati Westbrook lawsuit. And I really, I really don't understand why after everything she went through with Tati, why are we here again? Why are we in another lawsuit? Here's what Katie could have done. Even though she wouldn't have, here's what I would have done if I was her. Let's just say that I screwed everything up. I end up in a lawsuit with Tati Westbrook, one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. The second that I realized that that was going down and it was actually happening, I would have changed my entire demeanor. I would have cleaned up my YouTube channel. I would have changed the way that I'm delivering news since she wants to be considered a journalist. She's not a journalist. She lies and constantly stretches the truth, just like Todd Chrisley said himself. We've had these conversations before, but back when she first got into that lawsuit with Tati, that could have been her moment of change. That could have been her moment to say, you know what? This is not okay. And I want to save my YouTube channel and I want to save whatever bit of reputation that I have left. So let me use this as a learning opportunity to say, maybe I shouldn't be lying, stretching the truth, defaming people, uh, saying that James Westbrook got rid of his mother's oxygen for financial gain. All of these things that we've had previous conversations about, let's not do all of that so that we don't end up in another lawsuit. Although I don't know a lot about Todd Chrisley, what I do know and what I have heard from several other people is that he is not the type to want to meet in the middle. He has the money to keep this tied up in court and continue fighting Katie. Katie, I don't think, has the financial means to continue to sit in court or go back and forth with someone who is extremely wealthy. I don't think that the end of this lawsuit, if it gets that far, I don't believe that it will have the same outcome that the Tati and James lawsuit had. I don't think that this is a um, someone who wants to find common ground. This sounds like someone who has had quite enough of without a crystal ball and all of her nonsense. It's pretty obvious when you look at this situation you know, Katie's not a millionaire, obviously. I don't think that Todd is in this for money. What I think, and this is just my imagination, this is only a guess, allegedly, fiction, all the things. I think that what he's going to want to see is her YouTube channel be taken down. Because in a situation like this, if you're going into a lawsuit with someone that you know does not have $2 million to, you know, settle with you and pay you and get it out of the way. What's the next best thing? Let's take the platform that she is spreading all of this misinformation and stretching the truth and all spreading all the nonsense. Let's take that platform so that she cannot do this to someone else in the future. Because Katie has already shown that she is not the type of person to learn from mistakes and turn a new leaf and try to get a new slate when she messes up. Unfortunately, it's a pattern. I talk a lot about patterns on my channel and I don't mean to be so repetitive, but it is something that I pay very close attention to because I am all about second chances, third chances, fourth chances. But if I literally see the same action repeated over and over and over again without any regard for prior, you know, f***-ups that you've gotten yourself into and you continue to just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat, even though you have half of YouTube calling you out, you have subscribers calling you out, you have members leaving your channel and going over to Reddit pages and sharing their experiences, and you continue to do the same thing, to me, that is someone who is not capable of learning from their mistakes. I think in life, you have some people who will make a mistake, they'll reflect on it, 
and make it better. Some people, they'll make a few mistakes and then they'll finally reflect on it and say, you know what, I have to change my life. This is not gonna work out for me. I'm hurting other people around me. You know, my public image, if you do have a public image, is being tarnished. So let me turn it around while I can. But then you have those select few that just refuse to take any second or third chances and do anything of value with those. And unfortunately, I do think that Katie falls into that category. Now, the reason that I'm saying that Katie was allegedly served on the 28th or the day before or whatever is because I don't know for sure. I don't know that to be a fact, so I am saying allegedly, but I also don't know why Todd Chrisley would go onto a podcast and say that she was served if she wasn't. And he also, in that same podcast, you guys heard it, said that she turned it over to her attorney. You know, and it does seem kind of like Groundhog's Day because we are going through the same process of her deleting evidence, deleting Twitter, deleting things that should not be deleted. And I always kind of look at it like if you're if you're not putting out things that are defamatory and lies and stretching the truth, then when something like this does happen, you don't need to delete anything because you haven't done anything wrong. But the way that she tweets and deletes and hides stuff tells me a lot. So while I do think that I've covered just about every avenue of how Katie could, you know, turn it around and right some of her wrongs and change her image and her reputation online. Obviously, all of those are never going to be taken for anything by her, and she is going to continue to rinse and repeat. So here's the thing. I'm not going to nitpick every little thing because I've given commentary on every aspect of things that she's done online. But what I will say is if this proceeds and if this is really going to happen, I will provide commentary sporadically on it because I do find it very interesting to watch someone on YouTube go through something like this. It is somewhat interesting. It's unfortunate that she is in this situation yet again. However, it could have been um, something that was avoided almost a year ago, once things went south with Tati. Once she got that first CND from Tati, that could have been her time to change. Don't ignore the other three, so four total. Let's not ignore those. Let's turn a new leaf, let's not get sued by Tati, and let's completely change our demeanor and our delivery online, and not end up in a defamation lawsuit and things would look a lot different right now. So even though I'm done picking, you know, her actions apart, I will sporadically share thoughts on the lawsuit just because it is very interesting. It'll be interesting to see how she reacts to this and, you know, where things go. So I will keep an eye on it, but either way, you guys tell me, what do you think? What do you think about this? Do you have pity for her? Do you have no pity for her? I said in my other video, as far as isolating certain issues, I don't think that she deserves to be stalked, asked, doxxed, have fake CPS reports sent in, people trying to get her husband arrested. All of that stuff needs to stop because like I said, she's showing her true colors, no help needed. She will make her own bed to lie in. Nobody needs to make false accusations against her because she is getting herself in trouble all on her own. So either way, be sure to leave your thoughts down below. But for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.